Hey guys and welcome back to a new video. In this video I want to cover something that I wanted to cover for quite a while now and something that I don't have yet on my channel. And those are three very cool flow operators, so Kotlin flows, reactive programming. On the one hand we're going to talk about combine, we're going to talk about zip and we're going to talk about merge and what the differences between these are, when you should use these and when they are actually helpful. I have a very basic setup here that I will use to demonstrate what I want to show you. And that is just a main activity. Here we have actually um, a state that doesn't exist yet, doesn't matter. Um, just a text that will display some numbers and an empty main view model. And the important things here are three classes. On the one hand, we have a user class, just containing standard user stuff. We have a post class, so you could imagine that is some kind of Instagram post or so, like we have an image, username, who posted that, and a description of the post, very basic here. And we have a profile state. So if we want to show a profile of a user, then this state will reflect that. And that is basically, yeah, a combination of a user and that user has some posts. It's like your Instagram profile. And yeah, that state just combines these. And I will now show you a very cool flow operator, how you can actually create such a profile state. And for that, we want to jump into your main view model. And to make use of that, even though we're using uh, Jetpack Compose, we have to use flows, obviously, and not compose state directly in the view model. But thanks to the function, how's it called, collect as state, you can very easily convert a state flow to a compose state in the UI. So let's actually just create the flows. Let's um, just make this a private val and let's let's call this user. So we're not going to make any real API calls here just to simulate this and that you get an impression of when these operators are actually useful. So first of all we have a user flow. Let's say that takes a user object, nullable and the initial value is null. And since we're not going to observe this in the UI, we can just leave this as a mutable state flow so we don't need that immutable version of it. And we can do the same. We can actually just duplicate this, oops, like this. And we can rename this to posts. And that will just be, we don't even need this. We can just say and that's an empty list of type post. So it's very typical that you get your user information from one API endpoint and your posts information, so the list of posts a user made from another endpoint. And if you have a profile, then you want to kind of combine these. And that is just one use case of the flow combine operator that I want to cover now. So let's say we now have um, a private val profile state and here I'll actually use that underscore because that is the state we actually want to expose to the UI. So we want to have an um, immutable version of that in the view model and we want to have an immutable version. So mutable state flow and that will also start with a null value. Profile state nullable and we're going to have the same as an immutable version as state flow like this. And now what we basically want is if the user visits the profile and let's say we have some kind of um, WebSocket connection or so that observes in real time when there is a new post or when profile data changes. So what we can do is we can actually kind of listen to both these flows at the same time. And if either of these changes, we want to update our profile state. And we can do this with the so-called combine operator. We can use this using user dot combine and we want to combine it with our post state flow. So we can just take two flows, one flow and we combine it with the other flow and we get a resulting block here that will give us on the one hand the user and on the other hand the posts. And now whenever either of these change, so if there's either a new list of posts that we might observe from a WebSocket connection or so, or if the user profile data changed, then we want to update our profile state. So what we can do in here is we could say um, underscore profile state at value is equal to profile state at value dot copy. Actually, now check here. And we can simply now use these two values to update the state. So 
the profile picture URL will be from the user. We have the username, user.username. We have the description, which is user description. And we have our post list, which we can directly assign here. So now, whenever there is new user data, this block will trigger with the new user and with the old post list. And if there is a new post data, so a new list of posts, this will also trigger and it will then uh, take the last emission of the user state flow. Right now, this won't do anything because we haven't launched or collected the flow yet. And we can very easily do this by just appending a launch in and we need to launch it in a coroutine scope where we can simply use a view model scope. This is pretty much equivalent to using a view model scope like this and launching a coroutine in which we then take this stuff and just say dot collect like this. However, I like this way of writing it more because we just save this extra indentation here that we have in this case. But either of these is fine and will achieve the same result. But what happens now if you actually need to combine more than two flows? So let's say you also want to combine this with a third flow. Let's say you have a Boolean state whether the user, the current logged in user is authenticated or not, because if the user is not authenticated, we also don't want to listen to profile changes because we rather than want to show to the user some kind of screen, hey, please re-log in or whatever we want to do. Let's say we have that here. Um, private val is authenticated as a mutable state flow of, let's say, yeah, the user is authenticated by default, but we would have some kind of logic in which we decide whether this is true or false, let's say a token expired or so, then we would switch this to false. And how do we now get this here into our function that we basically listen to the three values, so to user posts and is authenticated? And well, the answer is pretty simple because what this combined function returns is another flow. And the flow will basically return whatever we return here in the last line. So right now, if we would have something like on each here, you can see we don't really get an emission here because what we return here in this line is just unit because this is not really a value because we just assign something. If we would, for example, have a Boolean here, you would see, okay, we actually get a Boolean here on each. And that is how we can actually make use of uh, this combine operator to also combine more than two posts, uh, more than two flows. So let's say we have combine here and we want to combine this with is authenticated. Then we would first of all, as a first parameter, get what this flow returns, which in this case would be a Boolean. That's not what we want. We instead kind of want to pass the user data together with the information if the user is actually authenticated or not. So what I will do is I will actually kind of um, swap these out a little bit. So I will combine the is authenticated flow together with the user flow and combine that with posts. And here we would then actually cut this out and now what we need to return here in this flow, in this combined block, is something that should um, contain the information whether the user is actually authenticated. And if the user is authenticated, we also want to pass the user data to the next combined block. And we can very easily do this by just checking if is authenticated is true. Then we want to pass the user data and else just null. And here we of course need to swap this out with is authenticated and user like this. And then here in this combined block, we get the user data because that's what this line returned. And we combine that with posts. So we get that as well. And now we effectively listen to three flows. And here we could then check if the user is actually not equal to null because it is not equal to null if we are authenticated and we pass along this value. And only then we want to update the state. We don't want to update it if we're not authenticated. So then we can say, actually just paste what I copied before and get rid of these null checks here. 
So I won't implement something now to show that in the UI. You just need to trust me that this would now properly update the UI, uh, the, the profile state, if we are actually authenticated and we would get some user data. But yeah, to not further complicate this, I don't want to write some simulation logic here for user, for it's authenticated and for posts. I think this is already a very practical example so you can see when it makes sense to use this combine operator instead of just having like uh, three collect blocks so to collect the is authenticated flow the user flow the post flow and then updating the state in each of these flows however there are two more functions which are kind of similar to combine and that I want to also talk about these because um, they often lead to some confusion. I don't have very practical examples for these yet, um, but I think it will still get very clear if we just use two normal flows, private valve flow one, and these two normal flows just emit some numbers. So we can create these using a normal range. We can say as flow, so we just emit all these values from one to 10 in a flow, and we can then say on each, and we can simply say, okay, we want to delay each emission by one second. So once a second, we will actually emit a value. So first one, two, three, four, and so on. We can duplicate this, also have a flow two that goes from 10 to 20. And let's say we delayed this for 300 milliseconds. So flow two actually emits values much faster than flow one does. And the other two operators that I want to talk about here are on the one hand zip and on the other hand merge. So we can zip and merge to flows. Let's see what the difference of these, um, what the differences are and how it compares to combine. First of all, starting with a zip. If we take a flow like flow one, we can call that a zip here and you can see we need to pass another flow which in this case would be flow two. It could also be any other flow we want to zip it with. And we again get a block of code here, which gives us the emission of flow one and flow two. So till now it's pretty much the same as combine. So we get the value flow from flow one, which is number one, and we get the value from flow two, which is number two. And this function will now give us both these values. So what is the difference here to combine? Well, combine will actually be called when either of these states change. So it actually won't wait for an emission or so. But that is exactly what zip will do. So if we simply have a very basic composed state, var number string, that is what I had in the UI already, by mutable state off, and that is just an empty string by default. Import that here, make it a private set so we can only change it in the view model. And we then just append these numbers here to our number string and show it in the UI. So you can see how that would work. Um, so we can say number string plus equals, let's say we have parentheses here, first of all, number one and number two, because zip will exactly pair these two numbers like this. And we can then also make sure to have a new line. So each emission would get a new line. And the difference now to combine is that this will actually wait for an emission of flow one and flow two. And when there is an emission of both these flows, this function will trigger. So for combine, an emission of either of these flows is enough to trigger um, an execution of this function. And with a zip, we actually need an emission of both these flows. So if we now launch this in view model scope, and remember in our UI layer, we have this text here where we just simply append these numbers. And if we now launch this here in on my device and take a look here, then we will see these emissions. And every second we get a new pair of values where it simply combines these two numbers that we that each of these flows emits. And you will see when uh, the, the first flow reached its end at 10, then it will take the last number from flow two, actually not the last number, the last number would be 20 because the range goes to 20. But since there is no other emission from flow one coming, it can build a new pair. So that is how zip works. And if we now go back, then I want to show you the last operator, which is merge. So we can merge multiple flows into one flow and we can directly 
call this here like this. So this now takes any number of flows here in this um, function that we need to pass here. And we just have two flows here, but you could pass as many as you like, and it would merge these together into just one flow. So we have our flow one, and we have our flow two. And then that merge function will return another flow where it merged all these flows we passed here together. And you can see we get a warning. We just need to add this annotation here to main view model. And then we can use on each to just listen to each emission, which will now just return an integer. So all of these flows actually need to emit the same type of values. Otherwise, we would simply get any here because it kind of doesn't know how to merge flows of different types. But then we can again use actually our number string here and simply add the emitted value here like this. So we just add this value to our number string and we then launch it in our view model scope. If we then comment this one out and launch this on my device again, let's see what this now does. And you can now see that this behaves quite different from um, from the zip operator because it now just with any emission any of these flows we pass to the merge function It will simply yeah, emit that in the resulting flow So it will just take all these flows we passed and put all emissions into just one flow So it won't wait for any other flows to emit a value It will just push everything into this resulting flow which we can collect with on each or just yeah using the actual collect operator in a coroutine. So if this video was helpful for you and you learned something new about Kotlin flows, which is a very important topic, then let me know that down below, leave a like and make sure to watch the next video here.